recently, um, I won't name names, but her husband's a very, very well-known and successful opera singer in the UK. And, and she had a great career herself. And she did a masterclass with a very, very famous singer who told her, she already had kids at this point, and this, this singer said to her, well, you've got the potential to have a stratospheric career, uh, but you need to get rid of your kids. <laughs> Absolutely no irony. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've managed to twist my dad's arm to come and chat to me today um, about the issues that Swapra are um, interested in and talking about and how, how that relates to his world, which is TV and theatre. Um, so, Dad, uh, have you worked with many female directors in, in your career? Uh, yeah, at first, when I first started in, in telly, my first two or three jobs were all directed by women, but then over the last 35 years doing television films and things, I should think I could count them on two hands, probably six, half a dozen at the, at the most. In 40 uh, well, years? In 40 odd years, yeah. Is yeah. that television or, or theatre as That's well? That's in, in television and in, in movies. It's, it's uh, particularly directors, um, very, very few. And of those two have now given up because they had children and, and look after their children full time. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the reason for that? Well, it, it's uh, obviously that, that uh, women on the whole at some point in their lives often want to have children and, and uh, they're penalised for it because uh, in, in most instances they look after the, uh, the childcare mm. in the early years particularly and it often affects their careers. Do you think that... Do you think that that's the main reason that there are so few female directors? Do you think it's partly a sort of unconscious gender bias, which is what we... Oh, it's, it's definitely been an unconscious or a conscious gender bias that, that all the producers in the through the 70s and 80s were male, and that's changing very fast. And, mm. and uh, now a, a lot of the high executives in telly are, are women, and, and so a lot of the producers are, mm. and that'll lead gradually to, to more female directors and it's certainly leading now to more female writers which is the most important thing mm. I think once you get female um, writers writing from a female point of view mm. there'll be much much more work for women. Yeah that's what I feel with opera as well I feel that the, the, the female voice is, is missing from uh, the fact that we have so so few female composers and librettists means that the the stories that we're that we're being presented with in, in the opera world, in the contemporary opera, are, well, we're not hearing the female Men's voice. Stories, yeah. yeah. Do you think, um, at what, as you now, you know, spend so much of your life um, babysitting for me, um, what what are your observations about the opera industry and, and juggling sort of opera career with parenting? Well, I, th I think it, where television and films are concerned, and radio in fact, they, they work because there's much more money involved, they work out a very strict schedule and they stick to it, where it seems to me that in opera often you don't have any sort of schedule, you, you, you're uh, working through rehearsals at a very steady pace and, and everybody has to be there twiddling their thumbs and I think it's, it's, uh, it's not beyond the wit of man to, to, to set up a schedule and stick to it and, and actually it usually makes a production work much more smoothly and efficiently if you do that. Mm. In the opera world, we usually get our schedule on a Friday afternoon for the following week, which in the UK, it, this is in the UK, which is better than um, in some places abroad, Germany and France. I think it's very normal to just get get the schedule the night before. Yeah, it's it leaves behind um, the the only group of singers who are parents who are able to, to work are those that can afford to just pay for a blanket of childcare. Um, yeah, or who have grandparents, and, that's the, the well, reason yeah. we try and do as much as we can for you because we're very aware of, of what a struggle it is and we want to make sure that you get a, a fair crack and, and uh, have the opportunities to do it. We were, I'm very aware as well that when you were born and your brother, that mum who had a, quite a successful telly career at the time pretty much gave up mm because mine happened to take off in a big way around the same time. Mm -hmm. So she did, we didn't have grandparents around, they were, they were um, mostly dead. Um, so she, she had to stay at home and, and kind of forfeit her career. Mm -hmm.
it's obviously some sort of tradition that that's how it works yes, and yeah, therefore yeah. nobody thinks oh we'll we'll set up a schedule instead no. and as a result your penal young parents are penalized by that they can't mm -hmm. work out how on earth they're going to cope with, with their kids and therefore they're going to turn work down that they could do very well yeah it's well known that, that most couples who, who have to employ if they both work whatever job they're in at least one of the salaries goes completely on childcare and mm. child minding and and what have you and, and governments aren't have never been very good at, at supporting that mm. you know carers of all sorts in this country just aren't appreciated or in any financial sense at all no. yeah the, on, the only reason i think that i've been able to to have any sort of career is because i've had so much support from you and mum um in all in all sorts of ways and so the people i know that there are so many people who don't have that sort of support and that's partly why i'm so keen to to be a part of this this swap for movement to try mm -hmm. and support the people who don't have that kind of support um, that's fine i think for, for singers unless you unless your career is really established by the time you have your children yeah it's so important to take on the the work that it's going to be a step on the ladder of your career and so I think because because you and mum have been able to support me so much um, financially and uh, in terms of well practically looking after the kids um, I've been able to take on jobs that don't pay very well but l that are helping me um, progress yeah yeah, yeah. It, in the bigger companies as well there should be uh, certainly in, in acting the National Theatre for instance should have a, a, a crash I think without a doubt maybe the Royal Shakespeare Company I don't know about opera companies but the big ones there's no reason why they shouldn't have some crash mm. facilities available as well for so the, those of us who do live in London for instance I, I'm not sure that I would use a crash because I wouldn't want to fight through rush hour traffic to have um, you know, with a push chair and and the baby, at the end of the day and then beginning of the day, when actually w what would be more useful to me would be the scheduling thing. Yeah, I think yeah. it all comes down to the scheduling thing. If I had a really good idea of what the schedule was going to be in advance, I wouldn't need a workplace crash because I would ha be able to put the childcare in, into place that I needed at home, which would be preferable. But I think for the f for foreign artists it, it would be a huge thing yeah. to have a crash facility That's right. especially for well, breastfeeding uh, 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 every director must have an idea in the head of, of where they're going to be at different points in the rehearsal schedule so come to Holland Park on the 31st of July and support Swapra at their wonderful gala I'll be there and I hope I'll see you and we'll also be auctioning as one of the auction prizes a, a Lewis box set and one of the scripts and I'll sign it for you on the night <laughs>